Hello everyone. Today I thought we could try painting an eye. I've got a cat's eye that we can use as a photo reference. We're going to be using these colours which I have here. I have cerulean blue, burnt umber, burnt umber mixed with a bit of black, Payne's grey, sap green or any green you might have already in your palette and here's sap green mixed with a bit of Payne's grey to darken it and I'm also using cadmium yellow. So to start off with I photocopied it in black and white one just so I can draw over it and also to see the tonal values, to see how dark and light things are. So what I've done, I've put a box around the eye. This gives me the angle that the middle of the eye and the top of the eye, they're at that angle so they're not going to be drawn like a normal eye. They would have up there and like that. But also, once you've done that, it gives you this shape so you can see what angle that swoops up at. And here again, that little triangle shape. This always helps for when you're drawing eyes to see all the, the angles that they are. So here I'm going to start, I can see just from about here, my square comes down. Actually comes down a lot further because that little triangle is much smaller. And then I've got this nice triangle where it swoops up here. And here is almost straight, giving me up to about there. And the pupil. So if I had this eye rounded first, like that because the eye inside this eye socket is round ball. So if I had it like that, and the pupil would be right in the middle of it. I'm also looking at the distance, so that's not quite big enough. I would say about like that. Rub some of this, these out. Then I'll just keep the lines which I'm happy with. And I'm also have here the highlight, so I'm going to draw that in so I don't lose that get rid of some of that pencil mark. Just dab off some of it with your putty rubber so you don't have so much pencil markings. And a little bit of a highlight here. Yes, I'm quite happy with that shape. See the pupil, if it was in the middle of that circle, by putting the eyelid over it, it just helps it get right in the looking in the right place. So sometimes if you, let's say you have an eye like this, even if it's a human eye, and then you might think, well, it's there, but it doesn't look right. But if you had your circle, put your pupil in the middle, and then you can put your eyelid over it. And you rub out those little bits the pupil will look in the right place. This is the helpful tip. So what I'm going to start with, I'm going to use two brushes. I've got a size four, size six actually round. It's a small brush. And I've got here a size 12 round as well. That's to give me just wetting the areas that I'll need. I've put my drawing on a 300 GSM watercolour paper. 
but as I'm not going to be wetting a lot of it, it doesn't really matter what, what uh, weight your paper is. Just going to rub out a few more of these pencil marks. Okay, now what I'm going to start off with is with cerulean blue, which is the light blue. I'm going to put a little bit of blue on the eyelid just so it shows the light hitting there because it is kind of very dark and wet and it makes me see a bit of blue in it. Here again it's going to be reflecting the sky. Just a tiny bit of blue there, a tiny bit of blue there. Now I'm going to wet the eye. I'm not going to wet the pupil just yet, that will be added the last. And I'm going to start with giving it a coat of cadmium yellow. While that's still wet, I'm going to add a bit of my sap green or olive green. Just see the green around there. So I'm going to darken that a little bit more with my green and Payne's grey mixture. I think I need to spread my green out a little bit more around here. You can keep on adding colour as long as it's shiny and wet. Now I see in the corner it's much darker so I'm going to use a bit of purple to darken my yellow. Just add a little bit of dark just there. Okay, while that's just drying off a little bit, I'm going to get my burnt umber and black mixture. Just go adding a little bit where I think the darks, these are going to be needed to be a much darker. But I'm just going to add, just so I can map them out. So when I'm putting my darks around the blue line, I'm just going to just leave a little bit of the blue showing. It's just going to give me a, a hint of that colour there. darkening it with just a little bit more black. If 
if any colour has gone where you don't want it while it's still wet you can just lift it off I'm just going to let that dry now okay now this is all pretty dry even with the back of your hand it's easier to, to feel if it's dry or wet okay so now looking at the colours I'm going to mix up my, a black mixture using burnt umber black but a bit of ultramarine in there as well that's going to give it another dimension burnt umber or burnt sienna and ultramarine make black I, I sometimes just black to just give it an extra darkness Here I'm mixing my burnt umber and ultramarine. See how dark, lovely it makes it. Very nice. Rich black. So burnt umber, uh, sorry, um, burnt sienna and ultramarine, those two colours, varying the quantities of each, will give you the colours black, the colour indigo, the colour Payne's grey, and burnt umber. So all with ultramarine and burnt sienna. Amazing. So here's my colour. In fact I could probably go much darker than that. Let's mix up some more ultramarine. See how much I'm scrubbing? If I had a nice brush like this one with a fine tip it would wear out straight away. That's why I use an old brush, something a bit stiffer. That just gives me, um, you know, so I can scrub without feeling bad that I'm wasting the tip of my favorite brush. Yeah, that's getting there. See, it does take quite a bit of scrubbing from a pan. Tubes sometimes are really better for making deep colours, strong colours like that. That will do. Nice and dark. So this is for the outline of the eye. And it is really quite dark. Just around here. Right against the eye, the iris. This is very dark because it's in the shadow as well. And I'm darkening that edge as well, just leaving a variation to give it that form, that shape, curved shape. It's a slight curve, but there is. I'm going to clean my brush and just soften, not a loaded brush, just damp. Just put some water on there because it feels it needs to be nice and soft. In fact, I'm just going to put a touch of raw sienna just to give it a bit of colour. And I'm going to soften that edge too. Burnt sienna just there. Sorry, raw sienna, I should say. Okay, so I can see all this needs darkening. I'm going to put some Payne's Grey. Just to start off, but first I'm going to wet the eye. Wet it around because I want it nice and soft, no hard edges. So if I just dampen the eye again, it was nice and dry, so no, no 
unless you're scrubbing very hard, the colour should just stay put. still wet but I want to just spread that out a bit. There's a bit of a deeper colour here. I'm seeing some burnt umber just on top of that yellow. Even You can even mix a bit of yellow with the burnt umber. Just put some of that colour there. That's again adding to the to the shape of the eye. Just see a touch, some little texture there on the eye. It's all about question of painting what you see. Try and put on those little shapes, those little marks, those shapes that are colour, shapes that are just outline or just everything basically is a shape. The shape of the highlight, the shape of the little marks. Okay, a little bit darker. Just this will need quite a lot of darkening. Just apply, applying more and more layers until you're happy with it. Remember it'll always dry 30% darker than what you put it on. I always feel this needs softening so I'm just going to run it that brush right down the middle. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of, again, the raw sienna. Just see a little bit of that colour there, just to complete the eye a bit more. Now this needs a bit more colour here, I think. I think it's a bit too wet still, so I'll let that dry for a bit. And what you need to think about is keeping the bottom of the eye nice and light so just now and then just lift with a damp brush lift it once just to clean anything that have gone too far I think that's quite important the light shining on the eye and refracting down coming out that way much brighter I think I'm going to dark also looking at the green that needs a bit more dark so I've got my green and Payne's grey while it's still wet you see I'm going to add just a bit more the edge too. Again that's gone a bit dry so I'm just going to put a damp brush on the edge and it softens it straight away. As long as it's not bone dry I'm just bringing the water to it. Now I'm looking at the green shape. Do you see it's more rounded there? bit more open here. A little bit more dark. I think I'm going to add a bit of, yes, my burnt umber and yellow. A little bit more burnt umber. I'm not flooding the brush so I feel it's too much and I tap a little bit off. Just so it goes a little bit, see a little bit on my brush where I want to go. If it was loaded it would just kind of flood and go where I don't want it so I have just a tiny bit on my brush enough to put it and control it more where I want it. It's coming on. So let's see if this is ready. Put a little bit more dark just to bring in the colour there. I think I'm now ready to put in my black, but the black I'm always going to use pure black. 
pure black for the pupil. That is something I do. You can make up your own black if you want, but um, I like to do just pure black. That should do the job. The top of the highlight, that's got quite a nice hard edge and a few like reflection shapes. See how this is going to come alive once I put that in. Mindful to keep the highlight. I don't want to lose that. This is soft edge, so I'm just going to put it here and then in a minute put some clean water just to soften that edge up to the highlight. You can see it's all soft and fuzzy. It's like, come to life. Now you can see why I love painting eyes, it's just it's a surprise each time. Darkening again, just the, just on the edge. Always adjusting the tonal values. Now with some clean water, not too much again. I don't want to flood the area because that's still wet. But I'm just going to put a bit of water here and then bring that on. Just scrubbing it, scrubbing it a little bit on the edge to soften it even more. Might put a bit more blue back in there. I think I lost my blue. It just makes it reflection of the sky, which makes it look more realistic. I'm always cleaning my brush when I've cleaned some paint off it so I don't put it back. So there's no point in taking it off and then putting it back on. So I always need to clean my brush after each lifting of paint. Here needs a bit of a softening. Just going to move to a bigger brush. Nope, the smaller the less better. Okay. A little bit of blue back in there again. these edges are quite soft so I'm just going to again gently rub it really just super damp not wet at all. Anywhere else I need to darken maybe a little here. What I might do just to show you is some texturing, dry brushing. So here I have a loaded brush so I'm tapping on the tissue getting rid of the blotting so it stops blotting but there's still enough paint in there to keep it really flat. Go in the direction of the fur, give the impression of fur straight away. Maybe I could even use a bit of my burnt, burnt umber just here to keep the colour of the fur. more of my black. I don't want it full, just stop blotting. Strokes in the direction of the fur. Ok, 
giving just an impression as if it's fur around. Okay, I'm going to darken, just see a little bit darker up there with my Payne's Grey. Again, this is quite dry, so it's quite nice to just put it on. Yes, it gives it more depth. Here it's just got a little bit hard edge, so I'm just softening it. darkening as well. So if I paint towards the fur, so I'm painting the negative strokes, that also gives it impression of having texture and fur. There we go. Just I just keep on looking at what needs darkening. I think that's pretty much it. What I could do is still add a little bit more texture, a little bit more funny marks in the air now it's got a bit dry. And if you think that's too hard, which I do, I would just run a very damp brush over the edges. There. Yes, I'm happy with that. Hope you are too. I hope you have a go. And enjoy doing it. And until the next one.